What's up guys? So we're here again today Hard Racing and we're today we're going to be doing uh, cylinder, piston, gap, rings, basically everything assembling a uh, big board kit or even your stock one um, or a high compression piston. Just basically going over all the little uh, things involved with it. Piston, uh, gaps, cylinders, rings, gapping them, clocking them, and putting them in. Um, a lot of guys will do this themselves and some of the instructions give you a somewhat of an idea of what it looks like and how to do it but this is more a little bit more in depth. Um, we have a whole bunch of different tools to show you that you should use if you want to do it right but you don't have to. Um, but obviously the better you do this the more accurate it is the longer it's going to last. So you can kind of wing it but at the end of the day if something's off by a few thou or whatnot, then it's it's not going to be as accurate and last as long, and that's what this is all about. Because it it's really kind of mind blowing when you think about it. But everything comes down to half thousandths of accuracy to make these things last longer, especially in a, a air cooled motor like the Grom, because the piston swells, and you know with liquid cooled it doesn't swell as much but air cooled it swells so everything has to be pretty accurate otherwise you get lock up so so basically we have a cylinder here and your first measurement you want to do is your piston to wall clearance and that's basically the difference between the outer diameter of this and the inner diameter of this um, the only way to get this accurately would be a set of digital micrometer like this. This is a one to uh, zero to one inch. You also um, get one to two, two to three. I already have a, a traditional older one that doesn't have a digital readout. But basically you're going to use that measure um, up the skirt from here to here and usually the rule of thumb is um, about maybe halfway up the skirt but or like uh, I think it's like uh, 50 thou. Um, and you basically want to have, and it usually should say on the piston, the height of it, but you want to measure that, and then you take a digital bore gauge, like this. Of course, everything needs to be calibrated, so make sure it's right. And you measure, you put that in there, and you measure the bore, and you do it in a couple different directions to make sure that your cylinder is straight up and down and isn't, you know, wavy or warped and you also get the most accurate reading. You hold the gauge up and down perfectly straight, take that measurement and then you subtract the difference between the inner diameter of this, outer diameter of that and you get your piston to piston to um, wall clearance and on average again depending on how much this thing swells but around 3 thou to 4 thou if you want sloppy but you can also look in your Honda manual and you'll see I think it's around 335 is uh, your max on your wear. So, but generally rule of thumb. Now on a tighter tolerance setup, they're gonna be like 2,000, but um, three is usually the rule of thumb for the air cools to give you a little bit of room. Any more than that, you get piston slap, any less, and there's not much room for error if it swells and locks up. So basically, once you do that, then you wanna take your rings and you wanna gap them to the cylinder, and basically, doing that you're taking the ring you're sticking it in there and what you'll need is a set of feeler gauges I've removed these from the pack and basically you need to figure out how much gap you want um, on this one particular we're doing it's gonna be 11 thou on ring 1 and 14 on ring 2 you generally want to have a little more gap on ring 2 than you do ring 1 so that you don't get flutter in between the rings and so basically uh, these gaps are dependent on the bore and we have a formula if you go to our video for uh, ring gapping we have a formula that JE and Wiseco use which are pretty much the two best pistons on the planet and uh, that basically tells you how much gap you need for the diameter of the piston but on this particular one it's 2.5 inches so the it's a, le a point I say 11 thou top and, and 14 thou in the bottom and you may be asking, well, what does that mean? So basically you take the ring and don't just jam it in there and scratch up your piston, kind of squeeze it in there. And then you take your piston, and this way the rings are flat, because if they're like this or this in the, piston, in the cylinder, you won't get accurate reading. You press them down a little ways, pull them out, and then you take your 
feel our gauge and measure the gap. And if you can't get it in there, you need to sand it. Over here is a grinding wheel. This is specifically made to grind rings and you basically put it on here. We actually retrofitted this one with a diamond wheel. It comes with this uh, traditional sanding wheel, but we got these diamond wheels. Um, come in a little pack like this. They're super cheap, maybe six, seven bucks. And um, they do a lot better job of grinding it evenly, uniformly, and also a lot less burrs. It's a lot more fine. And you're basically gonna grind off a little bit at a time and keep measuring it. And this is a diamond sanding pad, so that way when you're done grinding it, you can get the burrs off and make sure, because you don't want to scratch up your cylinder. So it's a little tedious. Once you get the hanger, it's not that big a deal. So again, you grind a little bit, take the burr off, stick it in there, and measure it. And you keep doing that until you get the right exact tolerance that you want on your ring gap. All right, a couple of quick notes real quick. While you're um, sanding these, grinding these down, you're gonna get a burr on the bottom of it. And if you don't take the grinding, and you can also use fine graded sandpaper. We just prefer the diamond pad. These are again cheap, Amazon, eBay, you know, six, seven bucks, whatever, for a set of three. Um, but on the bottom, make sure you grind it down because you need the thickness of that piston ring to be uniform throughout. Otherwise, the piston rings are supposed to float on the piston. And if that thing doesn't get, the burr doesn't get uh, ground down, it's not going to float, it's going to stick. And eventually it's going to wear a scar mark in your cylinder. So make sure you do that. Very important. Also, when you're sanding them, make sure that when you push the two ends together, that, they are, that they're parallel with each other. What you don't want is the rings like this or like that, and you won't get a good seal. So make sure that you grind the wheel flat 90 degrees with the ring and make sure that when you squeeze them together that they're flat together and also when you're grinding them on the wheel don't a lot of people like to pinch them it's better not to grind both sides it's better to just grind one side because if you grind both you don't have a 90 degree reference if by grinding one then you can reference it to the one that you didn't grind as a 90 degree so again all this stuff is meticulously anal that we do and most good quality builders will do. Again, you know, if you're looking at it like, oh, these guys are anal, it's just because we want this stuff to last. So the more you can do this stuff correctly, the longer your big bore kit or piston kit, whatever you're putting together is gonna last. So just consider that this stuff is uh, labor intensive, it is meticulous, but it's all about making your stuff last longer. So, so now you got the rings gapped and the next will be to install them on your piston.